Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. This is the Sherwell Mission Community Bible Reading and Sermon for Sunday the 5th of July. And our Bible reading will be taken from Romans chapter 7, reading from verse 15 through to the end of verse 2 in chapter 8. So if you wish to follow that, please do. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do. This I keep doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I who do it, but it is my sinful nature in me that does it. So I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my body. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me? from this body of death. Thanks be to God, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature I am a slave to the law of sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So how did you mark New Year's Day for this year, 2020? On that same day, the World Health Organization was requesting information from the Chinese government about a new cluster of unidentified pneumonia cases in a city called Wuhan. Only 10 days later, the full genetic sequence of a new novel coronavirus to be called COVID-19 was complete and passed to the WHO and on to the global scientific community. So by the morning of Saturday the 11th of July, researchers around the globe were already beginning to analyse the sequence and within three days funding was already being allocated by major biotechnology companies to support development of vaccines. And here now, almost six months later, certainly as of the 29th of June, there were 149 different vaccines in development and 17 of these are in a more advanced stage, the stage of clinical evaluation trials. And alongside this race to a vaccine there is also the global solidarity trial which is being coordinated by the WHO and this is looking for treatments for COVID-19. This again is a global effort bringing together 35 countries into one large clinical trial which is cutting the time taken to establish what are the effective treatments and it's cutting it by a massive 80 percent so we have unprecedented progress and i would like to draw your attention to the fact that this unprecedented progress is happening in a time when a wave of prayer is sweeping the world from china which is the country with perhaps the largest 
single population of Christians. Through the world's largest churches, including Korea, across the churches of Africa and beyond, there have been national days of prayer organised across the world, ranging from amongst the churches of Canada to a national day of prayer in Tanzania. And here in the UK, many churches coordinated a day of prayer on the 22nd of March. And so I believe that there is a link between this global wave of prayer and this unprecedented progress and cooperation amongst scientists and medical professionals around the world. And one of the areas of research at the moment is looking at whether vitamin D is beneficial as a preventative as a supplement against the illness COVID-19. And in several countries, they found significant correlations between the deficiency of vitamin D and the seriousness of people's experience of COVID-19. And so they're investigating this. Public Health England in this country are involved in studying whether there is proof to support this. And the NHS already recommends that we have a good level of vitamin D just to combat existing coronaviruses, the colds that we have each winter. And it is found that many of us are actually deficient in vitamin D through the winter months, partly because of lack of sunshine and that combined with the diet that we have. And in 2017, so three years ago, a paper was published in the British Medical Journal which offered proof that vitamin D reduces the risk of acute respiratory infections. So many of us are lacking in vitamin D at least half the year. Our Bible reading today draws our attention to a problem. And I would like to suggest the idea that it's an opposite problem to a deficiency. It's an excess something I will call vitamin I. So we sometimes suffer from vitamin D deficiency. I'm going to suggest to you that this imaginary vitamin, vitamin I, that we suffer from an excess. Now, as I read to you, and perhaps as you read the Bible passage yourself from Romans 7, 15 through to Romans 8, verse 2, you'll have noticed I appear many times. In just 11 sentences, it appears 25 times. And alongside that, there's 12 uses of me, my, and myself. Now, this concentration of present tense first person language conveys a problem that reads as a personal confession for each one of us. An excess of written I. We cannot perfect ourselves, we cannot fix ourselves, we cannot change the repeating patterns of our own human nature. We have an excess of vitamin I, an inherent, insistent human nature that we cannot master. And when we look to ourselves, when we look within ourselves, when we rely on ourselves, we lose our struggle. The victory we search for is one that we cannot find within ourselves. No amount of introspection, no amount of internal dialogue can find us a solution to this vitamin money of flawed, broken self. Now the Bible says, nothing good lives in me, in my sinful nature. So if we cannot save ourselves, or change ourselves. We need to look outside of ourselves for someone to save us and change us. And the Bible says this, who will rescue me from myself? Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that God first declares us as innocent and then helps us to become innocent. And that sequence is so important. There is now, now, no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ, it reads. 
And if we admit that we are powerless to change ourselves, if we believe that Jesus Christ is the power outside of ourselves that can help us, restore us, change us, and if we turn to Jesus as that saving power, as our saving power, then God declares us innocent now, immediately. We are declared innocent in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to humans by which we can be saved. We are justified freely by God's grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. God declares us innocent. Now remember the order I said, God first declares us as innocent and then helps us to become innocent. So having declared us as innocent in Jesus, God then sends his Holy Spirit to help us become innocent. The spirit of life that sets us free from the law of sin and death. This being declared innocent is instant and this becoming innocent is a lifelong journey that will complete with our future resurrection body. The Bible says, we who reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory which comes from the Spirit. That's in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. Back to Romans. If by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the human nature, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So this journey that we're invited into is a journey of becoming innocent. And it's intended by God who has planned for us to become conformed to the likeness of Jesus. So that Jesus will be the firstborn amongst many sisters and brothers. We need sunshine and the right diet. Possibly we need supplements to raise our vitamin D levels to a healthy level. That is proven to help us. But thinking of vitamin I, I'd like to suggest to you we need the light of Jesus to reduce our vitamin I to healthy levels. We're invited to accept the gift of innocence now. God declares us innocent in Jesus. And then he journeys with us to help us become like Jesus. Innocent. First the gift of innocence and then the invitation to journey. Will you accept the gift? And will you join the journey? that you did.